Hello, hello, seven o'clock. <laughs> FGIC Facebook family. My chair is weird. How's everybody doing this fine Sunday evening? We've already got some friends' faces up there. I think the comments. Say hello if you can hear me. I might be talking too soft. Hello, hello. All 35 people are on. All right, hi, Sister Joan. Hi, hi Sister Lauren, my friend. Sister Chrislyn, hello. <laughs> hello, husband. Who is using my ID. Hi, Sister Vera, Sister Betty, Sister Elena, the one of the few people that calls me by my childhood nickname. <laughs> Sister Shelly, Brother Lori, good to see you on here. Sister Marlene, Brother Eddie, Sister Gloria, hi, Sister Alexis. This is the Sears are watching. Sister Pauline, good evening, my sister. Hi, Sister Cindy. The dog would also like to say hi. Brother Yogi is in the basement, locked up in his crate, not liking it too much. <laughs> ah. Sister Dorothea. Brother Chris Bruckner, good evening, my friend. Hi, Sister Camille, I love you. Miss you too, sweetie. Brother Dale. Sister Marie. Yes, yeah, speak a little louder. I don't know why I did that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sister Kathy, Sister Sandy, Brother Jack, Sister Sandy, and Brother Josiah. Say hello to Theo. So someone saw, I do have a friend who's going to join me, but he wants to have a special introduction. So I'm just waiting for a moment. <laughs> Happy Sunday evening, FGSC fan. That's right. One of these days, we'll get Brother Yogi to come and make an appearance, Sister Shelley. And you can, you can see his crazy self. He's a dog that doesn't quite look like a dog. <laughs> kind of looks like a creature from a movie that was made up. <laughs> Sad not to see your dog. Sorry, Sister Cindy. <laughs> Sister Mavis. Sister Danica. Say hi to your baby girl. Give hugs to her. <laughs> Sister Rita, it's not good to see you. Sister Lynn, That's not Brother Tony, God bless you. It's not Hello That's from the Tarvers. Hi, it's sister, it's brother, not, and sister Tarver. It's not Theta. <laughs> Serenity says, Hello, Mr. Theo. Would you like me to introduce you now? Yes. A little early, okay. So there's not a whole lot of people on, but we'll let you get in on this. Come on, introducing this is how Theo would like to be introduced tonight. Introducing Mr. Smooth. Come on over, Mr. Smooth. Hey, hi, Mr. Smooth. That's <laughs> you are so silly. Okay, nice tie there, man. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you just don't know with this kid. Mr. Smooth needs to put his glasses on. <laughs> Nobody can see you, Theo. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Oh, careful. You almost just fell. Okay, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> I don't want you to fall. Hi, Sister Kathy. <laughs> don't do that. That's absolutely <laughs> Don't do that, please. <laughs> I like my own mom. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay, that's enough. That's enough. Okay. What? What? Yes, in a, just a minute, okay? We're still oh. saying hello. Some people are still coming on. Of course. Theo has something to share, so he's getting a little anxious because he really wants to share it. Sister There's Judy says really hello. In it. No, there isn't. Do you, 
We'll just, well, just I drew give a it a picture minute. Of it. You drew a picture. I drew Very a picture. nice. Very That's nice. Hi, Sister Jenny. Mr. Smooth. We like it. Sister yeah. Jewel. Yes, my silly boy. Mr. Hi, Sister Mr. Carol Smooth. Martin. Okay, I'm dear. Do that you more need to time. simmer. No, I think you're good. I think everybody gets it that you are Mr. Smooth. But it's actually me. Once you take it's actually, I don't think you can, you confused anyone. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> I was laughing, so it was just a little not on course. Not on course? <laughs> that fits smooth. Okay, okay, okay. Enough with the smooth. <laughs> My dad said. Your dad said, no more smooth. <laughs> okay, I think maybe he had a cupcake today and the sugar is gone. Whoa! A birthday cupcake, right? Okay. All right. Hello from the Sanchez Seventeen. family. Okay, Theo. Enough. Nobody understands our inside jokes. Seventeen, seventeen, seventeen. Sister Agnes girls. says hello, Sister Adrian. We have a foursome here: myself and sisters Joyce, Gloria, and Sister Evelyn. Awesome. Good to have that group of amazing ladies together. That's not appropriate, Theo. <laughs> Oh, and you know what? Jordan says hi. Say hi, Jordan. Hi, so. Okay, that's enough. All right. Well, we've got 90 people on, so in order to get Theo to kind of, um, <laughs> Daddy says, who's that kid's father? Let's get this, um, your sharing done, and then you can go join Daddy and Annabelle, and I think maybe the dog was with them, too. Okay, so Theo has some poems that he wrote during church last Sunday, was it? This one I think I'm going to do last. You're going to do that one last? Okay. Yeah. So he had some poems that he wrote during church that he would like to share with you because <laughs> okay, he just little. loves his Jesus. Okay, so now, Theo, I want you to take your time, read your nice poems, and I want you not to be silly. You know why? Because you wrote them out of the love that's in your heart for Jesus. And so we're going to just take time to honor Jesus with your beautiful words, and we pray that it's an encouragement to you. This one's right? my favorite one. This is your favorite one. Go ahead, buddy. Joy, joy, joy for me. Joy makes me happy. All right. Good job. I don't know why I didn't X on that. No, I think maybe you were done and you were just happy with it. Okay, go on to the next one. <clears throat> this one I did a squirt poem. That's okay. Nobody can see that. Go yes. ahead and read that one. Hope is amazing. It gives me future. It's God's power. I love hope. Good job. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Good job, buddy. Okay, next one. The last one is my, my favorite and yes, favorite. <laughs> Peace is God's and... Nope. You had two, two O's there. Peace is good and... Um... It. it makes me feel good. And remember that last word, calm. And, and calm. Oh. Okay, remember how we said we were going to kind of tone down the silliness, okay? Thank and you. And this is the love, last one. Love, love, love for Jesus. I mean, love for Jesus. Love, love, love for Jesus. He's not bad. He's good. Amen. So Theo wrote about many special things about Jesus. Love, peace, that mom joy, and hope. Because you were asking, what are some good words to write about that mean something about Jesus? So I gave him the word, and then he wrote his own little poems and thoughts towards Jesus. So thank you, Brother Smooth, Brother Theo, for sharing how much you love Jesus, that you find peace in Jesus, and you have hope in Jesus. Where did and I all of go? that gives you joy. I don't know where your tie went. We'll find it later. Can you say bye to all of our friends? Say mm. bye. We love you. Mm. Thumbs up. Okay. Thank all you, right. Chris, bro. <laughs> okay. All right. Love you. Oh, Let's see Daddy. Good job. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> and that's a day in the life of Theo. <laughs> we never know where we're going to get with that one. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed that. <laughs>
<sighs> I tried to convince him that uh, his tie didn't go well with his shirt, but he convinced me otherwise. <laughs> So that's fun. Kids are fun. Kids will definitely take your long, weary day and um, bring some laughter and joy and lightheartedness into the situation. I'm so grateful for my little guy. Such a blessing. So we hope you had a good laugh, but also that his words that he wrote down maybe were an encouragement to your heart that a six-year-old could be thoughtful towards what does God mean to me in these ways. So we do have an amazing God who gives us love. He gives us joy. He gives us peace. Isn't it awesome? So before we move on, we can't forget to just give a great thank you to everyone for your continued giving and support of the ministry. And uh, so uh, this is just a nice reminder for all of you who um, <clears throat> have been continuing in that to uh, continue to give your giving through the online ways, going to fgichurch.org, clicking Give Now. You can also mail your donations to P.O. Box 4017, Manchester, Connecticut 06045, and, um, or through the Easy Tithe app. Um, and you can just search for our church by typing in the zip code 06040. And uh, you can be a part of blessing the kingdom of God and keeping the ministry going forward in this day. And if there's ever a day where the church has to uh, continue to move forward, today is the day. And uh, we just thank you so very, very much for your continued love and your giving and your heart and your prayers. And uh, just for the family of God that we have, it's pretty awesome that we can walk this walk together. And we just thank you so much for your continued support. So God bless you in that. And we know he will because his word says that he will. So he's a pretty awesome God this morning, this morning, this evening. He's an awesome God all day long. <laughs> I don't know what you're going to get from you guys today. I'm like, <clears throat> I, took, I ended up falling asleep and having a nap. So I'm still kind of like, oh, still waking up. Well, the title of my little message today um, <clears throat> is Who Has the Final Say? And um, <clears throat> I'm excited to kind of just be an encouragement for you. And uh, we're going to go to a couple of scriptures to begin with. Um, you're welcome to, to turn to them or we're just going to reference them. But it's in 1 Peter 3.22 is the first scripture who being Jesus is gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. I'll read it again. First Peter 3.22, who being Jesus is gone into heaven is and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Proverbs 16 verse 1. And I, I um, had seen a, an amplified version of this, so I'm going to read both the King James and the amplified just for further clarification. Um, and it says in verse one, the preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. And the amplified version says the plans and reflections of the heart belong to man, but the wise answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So here we go. We all um, we all face situations that look permanent, like they're never going to work out, and it can be really easy to get discouraged and accept. You know, sometimes we try to tell ourselves, "Well, I guess it wasn't meant to be." Um, but what I want the theme to be for this entire message is: it's not over until God says it's over, and ultimately, as the title says, He has the final say. Um, different things that we can face. That medical report may not look good, but that sickness doesn't have the last word. God has the final say. You may have struggled with an addiction for years, but that addiction doesn't have the final say. People may be against you. You have opposition, but people don't have the final say. Um, this is no disrespect, but the doctor, the banker, the lawyer, the expert, the judge, they may be good people, but they're not on the throne. God is on the throne and Christ being for you has so much more power than the world being against you. So today I want to encourage you that he, Christ alone, has the final say. God wouldn't let you get into a problem that he can't get you out of. 
He wouldn't have let the three Hebrew teenagers be thrown into a furnace if he didn't know the fire wasn't going to harm them. King Nebuchadnezzar thought he was in control. He thought he had the final say, that the fire would finish them off. That's what always happened to everybody else. But this time, hallelujah, this time he wasn't dealing with ordinary people. He was dealing with children of the Most High God. They came out without even the smell of smoke on them. Today, we need to remember that we are the children of God. And that, that alone makes us unstoppable. We have the advantage. God not only breathed life into you, into me, but he put a hedge of protection around us and nothing can touch us without his permission. You're not at the mercy of bad circumstances, of sickness, of accidents, of people being against you. None of that can stop what God has in store for you. This shows us that what God has for you won't go to anyone else. People may try to manipulate things. They discredit you. They leave you out. Don't worry. God is on the throne. He's the one orchestrating things. He knew who wasn't going to like you, who was going to try to push you down. You don't have to try to get even. Stay on the high road. And what has your name on it will come to you. When you go to the account of David, <clears throat> Uh, his father sent word for him to come into the house. And when Samuel saw him, the first thing he said, there's the next king of Israel. God doesn't choose the way we choose. We look on the outside, the size, the talent, the personality. Every one of David's brothers had the stature, had the strength, had the power in man's eyes to accomplish a great thing. But God, he saw differently and said differently. He looks at the heart. People may have counted you out, but God has already counted you in. He overrides what people say. You could say, I'm in an unfair situation and nothing's changing. But we have to remember, it's not over yet. That's not how your story ends. Your time is coming. Like with David, you're going to be called into the house. God hasn't forgotten about you. What he's promised is still on the way. <clears throat> Bad situations didn't stop it. People didn't cancel it. Delays don't mean it's not going to happen. What God has started, he's going to finish. He has the final say. And we have to be so careful that we don't go around talking about how it's not going to happen. I think sometimes we are our own worst enemy with our words and our thoughts because we can get discouraged in when we're not seeing it move the way that we want it to move. And so sometimes we almost like, we discredit even God and his ability and it really starts to decrease our faith. So if we walk around saying, it's not gonna happen, this illness is gonna be the end for me, I'll never accomplish my dreams, I'm never gonna see what I wanna see, it just looks impossible, look at the years have gone by and you keep speaking that. You know what you're doing? You're putting your circumstances on the throne. You're putting your problems on the throne and you're saying, this problem, this circumstance has the final say. They control my destiny. But you need to take that problem off the throne and put God where he belongs back on that throne because he reigns over your circumstances and over everything in your life, not just over the universe. He reigns over your sickness. He reigns over your children. He reigns over your finances. He has the final say. The Bible says that Jesus has the last word on everything and everyone. That first scripture I read where it talks about everybody is subject to him, even angels and armies. He's standing right alongside God and what he says goes. You may be dealing with sickness. The medical report says you're not going to make it. That's one word. But God has the last word. The almighty God, the one who reigns, he says, I am restoring health back to you. Keep God on the throne. When thoughts tell you, I'll never get well, just lost my place. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going back down to my place here. I hit the wrong button. 
When thoughts tell you you're never going to get well, just say no thanks. I know a secret. My God has the last say. Sickness, you may have a say. Unfairness, you may have a say. But I have bad news. What you say is subject to God who created me. What you say is overruled by the Most High God. He has the final say on everything and everyone. God promised Abraham and Sarah that they were going to have a son, but they were both way too old. Abraham in his 80s, Sarah had gone through the change of life. There was no way in the natural for them to have a child. Sometimes God will put things <clears throat> in our heart that don't make sense in our mind. It's easy to dismiss it and think, well, that'll never happen. But the scripture says, Abraham didn't consider the weakness of his own body, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't deny that Sarah's womb was dead. He didn't ignore the facts. He just chose not to dwell on them. He didn't go around talking about how impossible it was. If you're going to stay in faith, you have to do like Abraham and not consider what looks dead. Don't dwell on what seems impossible. Are you spending more time thinking about the problem or the promises? Are you talking more about how big the challenge is or how big your God is? He has the final say. Hallelujah. Instead of considering the circumstances, we must choose to consider the greatness of our God. I've learned that the bigger you make God, this is so true time and time again, the smaller the problems become, the more faith rises in your heart. When you get in an agreement with God, he will make things happen for you that could never you could never make happen. If in today's day and age, if Sarah had gone for a checkup, the doctor would have said, sorry, ma'am, you're too old. You've waited a little bit too long. Plus, your husband's kind of old, too. Even if you were fertile, somehow, he doesn't have the seed. <laughs> no doctor would have given him a chance. Medically, it was impossible, don't, but don't let people talk you out of what God put in your heart. Don't let the experts convince you that it's not going to happen. Remember that famous expression, experts built the Titanic, it sank. Amateurs built the ark and it floated. Who has the final say? <laughs> sometimes the experts can be wrong. They're there for a reason and I'm not saying that they aren't right sometimes. But what you have to understand, the premise of what I'm saying is when God has told you something, <laughs> that takes precedence over what man ever has to say. Hallelujah. The experts can be wrong. They don't know what God put in you. They can't see the seeds of your greatness on your own. What they're saying about you may be true, but guess what? We're not on our own. We have the most powerful force in the universe speaking in our direction. He has the final say over your dreams. People may have discouraged you, but what he promised is on the way. He has the final say of your health. It may not have happened yet, but healing is coming. He has the final say over your children, that child that is off course. God knows how to get their attention. He has the final say. Hallelujah. When Abram was 100 years old, Sarah was 80. This was 20 years after their promise. They came into a final word. Sarah gave birth to a son. God, he overrode the laws of how our bodies were created. He overrode what the experts said, and he even overrode the mistakes they made. If Abram were here today, he would tell you, don't let the circumstances talk you out of what God put in you. It may look dead. Seems impossible. The experts say no way. But I can tell you firsthand, God has the final say. One of my favorite people in the Bible, Joseph. Think about him. His brothers had a say. They were jealous of him. They betrayed him. They sold him into slavery. Potiphar's wife, the man Joseph worked for, she had a say. She lied about him. So Joseph was put in prison he had all these negative voices, negative circumstances in his life, and he could have lived in bitterness, but he understood God's word was on his life. And after all the bad, he was suddenly brought out of prison and made the prime minister of Egypt, second in command. I think it's so cool that when God has the final say, it will make up for all of the, the injustice, all of the delays. You're not 
you know, all of the you're falling behind. You're not falling behind. You're not losing ground. One breath of God's word, one touch of his favor will push you ahead and bring glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe like Joseph that we can see God step in and override what's been hindering us. The final word is you will not lend. You will lend and not borrow. Sorry. You are above and not beneath. Maybe you were raised in dysfunction, abuse, depression, addiction. The final word is coming. God is about to break those yokes that have held you back in Jesus' name. So you can step up to who he created you to be. The final word is freedom, wholeness, abundance, victory. Hallelujah. Forgiveness. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus were close friends with Jesus. Lazarus became so sick and Jesus, he was in another city. So Martha sent word for Jesus to come and pray for their brother. They had seen Jesus heal people, open the eyes of the blind, turn water into wine. They knew he could do miracles. Jesus got the word. You would think, oh, I'm going to come right away. But he stayed in the city for a day. For two days, for three days. Then the worst nightmare came true. Lazarus died. They were devastated. Four days later, Jesus showed up. Has it ever felt like God came too late? You prayed, you believed, you asked. But the problem didn't turn around. Jesus. Martha said, Jesus, if you would have been here, if you had just come when we asked, my brother wouldn't have died. She could have turned away bitter and angry. That would be the end of the story. But she went on to say, she took a moment to think about who her Lord was and said, Lord, even now I know whatever you ask of God, he would do it for you. She was saying, yes, it looks bad. It seems impossible, but I know that you have the final say. Hallelujah. Jesus said to them, take me to where you buried Lazarus. Take me to the tomb. He was saying, take me to the place where you quit believing. Take me to where you decided you're not going to get well. You've never, you'll never meet the right person to do life with you. Unless you go back to that place and stir up your faith, it will limit what God can do. Because it is according to your faith. They went to the tomb. Jesus told them to roll away the stone. And Martha said, Lord, he's been four days dead. He's going to stink. That stone represents what you've given up on. You think it's been too long, too late. It's never going to happen. So you put the stone on the promise, the stone on your dream. You have to do your part and roll away that stone and start believing again. Get your passion back. This message is just as much for me as it is for everyone else because... You know, sometimes I almost wish I could just go back to being a little kid who just believed God for everything that he said because I didn't experience hurts and hardships. But then when hurts and hardships began to hit my life, those words began to seem to have almost more power. So we need these reminders today to remember, roll away that stone, roll away that heavy burden and put God back where he belongs in your life. They removed the stone. But Jesus didn't go in the tomb and lay hands on Lazarus like he did with the blind man and all, a bunch of other people that he healed. This time, what did he do? He spoke. He used his words and said, Lazarus, come forth. Instantly, Lazarus woke up. He came out of the tomb on the word from the Lord. He has the final say. Hallelujah. Jesus may not be physically here in person today, but we have his word. And just like he spoke to Lazarus, you will live and not die. Believe it. You can come out on that word. God says whatever you touch will prosper and succeed. That's a word you can come out on. Who the son is set free is free indeed. That's a word that breaks bondages. What God says in the scripture is the final word. Why did it take so long? Sometimes we get really discouraged when it doesn't happen in our timing, right? So for Lazarus, why did it take so long? And I think it was, um, I, I'm going to share as we go. There was a, 
time I was studying about the life of Lazarus for a different message I had preached a long time ago. And <clears throat> I think it's significant that Jesus waited four days to pray for Lazarus. He could have healed him the first day he knew he was sick or at least the second day and not made them go through so much. But there's always a reason for a delay. We may not understand it, but God knows what he's doing. And while we're waiting for a situation to turn around, waiting for our health to improve, waiting for your child to get on the right track, that's a critical time. You have to pass the test of waiting. That's a whole message in itself. If Martha would have stayed negative and bitter, complaining, she could have stopped that miracle. Will you stay in faith when heaven is silent? Will you wait with a good attitude and keep thanking God? Thank you, Jesus, for having the final say when you don't even see anything improving just yet. That's real faith. That's real faith, Jesus. How you wait will determine whether or not the situation changes. So going back to what I said once when studying on the account of Lazarus, I came back on someone's explanation about a possible reason why Jesus waited four days to come to Lazarus's rescue. And it's just a short paragraph that I pulled out. It says, back in those days, the Sadducees, they were very against Jesus. They believed that the spirit left the body three days after the person died. It wasn't a coincidence that Jesus waited to the fourth day. He did it so that when he raised Lazarus, there wouldn't be any doubt about the miracle. Amen? Sometimes God will wait on purpose. So you not only know it's his power, but so all of your critics, your neighbors, your relatives, your coworkers, they won't be able to deny the goodness of God in your life. The goodness of God in that situation. And it's not just for you, it's for God's glory so that others can believe that he is and choose to follow after him because he has the final say. <laughs> How many times have we heard of near-death experiences or medical recoveries that defied all medical science? And even the doctors and professionals had to give God some credit. This is a true testament that God has the final say. If it's not your time to go, you're not going to go. The scripture, God's word says, the number of your days God will fulfill. You don't have to fulfill it. It's God who's going to fulfill it. And nothing can take you out of his hands and his time. You could say, well, my loved one didn't make it. And I really hope this doesn't sound harsh. But we do have to rest in the peace of Christ and know that when their time was up, they fulfilled the days that God planned for them. They didn't show up in heaven unannounced. They didn't get there and God say, whoa, I didn't know you were coming. He knew. And that's why it's so imperative that each and every day we live for him. We live in his purpose. We live in his promises. We live on his word. We believe his word. We speak his word. We portray his word because we don't know when our tomorrow ends. But he does. Hallelujah. He does. And if we choose to serve him and live for him, when that time comes, it will be a victory for us. It will not be a failure. Hallelujah. You may be in a situation that doesn't seem like it'll ever, ever turn around. A dream that looks impossible. An addiction that seems permanent. I believe one day you're going to hear, there's been a sudden change. Something has happened that we can't explain. You thought you had reached your limits. Suddenly, you're promoted and the company wants you to run the department. You thought you'd always struggle with this illness, with that addiction, with that bondage from the past. Get ready for a sudden change. Through God's word, the forces of darkness can be broken. Any area where you're not living in victory is not permanent. It's temporary because God has the final say. And if we hold on to that final say, he's going to bring us through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This message, it's really short, guys. Sorry, I kind of ran. I told you I was like going to just my heart is full and I'm rambling. But this message was inspired by a recent report sent from the Blessings Lighthouse School in Zambia. And in the video they shared, if you haven't seen it, go to Worldwide's Facebook page and take a look of um, a post for Sister uh, Cynthia, Teacher Cynthia's college graduation. And in their little celebration they had for her, they were singing this song, Who Has the Final Say? It's a song I learned when I was there. 
who has the final say. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the final say. And it just was such a beautiful way to summarize the achievement in Cynthia's life. Um, I began to think about all the words that have been likely spoken into her, her life. <laughs> like, you'll never amount to anything. Poverty is your destiny. Hopelessness is your future. When uh, working with the school and working towards the different advancements that we needed to make on one of my visits there, I'm ashamed to say that I even limited her. I remember expressing my concerns to the administration team there about her abilities. And I remember in my first encounters with her, she was one of the shyest people, most shy people I've ever met. She was like a terrified deer in the headlights of an oncoming car. And she stood before the classroom and the students and her confidence seemed so low. And when she would open her mouth to teach, it was barely above a whisper. I later learned some of that was the simple fact that we were in the room and we made her nervous, but still it caused me to wonder and the words came out of my mouth to their administration. Like, is she really the right person for this position? And I chatted with her and I asked her, I was curious, why did she apply to work at the school? And she shared that she never really saw herself teaching children and that was scary to her. But when the school had reached out for helpers to look after some of the youngest ones, she thought it was going to be like babysitting, assisting some of the physical care of the littlest ones. And this was her first role in the school. But then there was an unexpected change and the teacher of the class had to relocate. So the school asked for her to cover for a while. She was terrified, she said. But as she began to work with the children, teaching colors, numbers, letters, she began to see them actually get it. She was inspired and found a new purpose. Prior to this, she felt like her life was washed up and had no meaning. She was a single mother who had faced many hardships in life. When she began to see how she now had been given the opportunity to change these children's future, it sparked a dream, a dream she never thought she could ever dream. She didn't want to let that go. On her own, she began to save as much money as she could and, could, and she began to take college courses all on her own effort. How blessed we were able to be able to sponsor the last two years of her schooling. And she just graduated two weeks ago. Woohoo! If you haven't seen it yet, I, like I said, go to our um, Facebook page. The last couple of posts, it was a couple of posts ago, and they had just a nice celebration with her at the school. So I'll say this in, in additional classroom observations as the years went by, we've continued to work with their team, supporting their teachers. Miss Cynthia's confidence in the classroom has soared. She has moved into grade one classroom. She's doing an amazing job at the critical foundation teachings that these students need to be successful as they move along. We're so proud of her. And I'm gonna say, I am so happy to say that my words didn't have the final say. God's words had the final say. So when I heard that song, I felt like it was God reminding me of my own words and a gentle reminder for me to use this also as a guidepost, a memory, a real life experience that God does have the final say. No matter what you're facing in life, whatever words have been spoken to you to make you think that you can't accomplish your dreams or what God has called you to do, what he's put in your heart. Continue to hold fast to the word of God, for it has the greatest power over anything that you or I have to say. I think sometimes we can actually be the ones who speak those words even to ourselves. So we have to recognize and put God's voice, God's word, his sayings, into the situation and to remove our own limitations and the limitations that others put on us and say, God, I place this situation in your hands and I am going to believe what you have to say about it. And it does require in order for us to know what does God say about it? We have to stay in his word. What is his word? It is what he speaks. It is his sayings. 
who has the final say? So I'm going to sing the song with you, and I wish I could give it justice like my Zambian friends with their beautiful accent, but if you know it, sing along with me and let the joy of the Lord bring you that peace, like Theo talked about, his joy, his peace, his hope, his joy, peace, hope, what was it? Love. All of those things can be found in the words of God, in him speaking your life. Trust that he has the final say. Here we go. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. He turns my life around. He turns my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the final say. Tell me who has the final say. Jehovah has the final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say. Well, he turns my life around. He turns my life around. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the final say. He makes a way where there is no way. Jehovah has the final say. Hallelujah. Let's look to him tonight. And if you need him to speak into your situation and you want us to join our faith with yours into what God says in your situation, type your prayer need in. You don't need to go into details, but God, he will see it. We will join together as a body and believe God's final word for your situation. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you that your word has power. We thank you. You have given us that pathway to that power by being able to read your word. God, take it into our spirit. God, and that we can see you are for us. You are never against us. There will never be a day that you look at us and you judge us and you say you are not worthy. You always look with faith, believing the better, the greater that you have created us to be. And you have spoken those things into our lives. And today we join together as a body of Christ, as a body of believers to say, we believe in your final say, Jesus. In every situation, whatever we're facing, sickness, finances, family situations, God, we know you have the final say. And today we push away the the words of darkness, the words of fear, the words that say we shall not make it, the words that surround us in society today to say, where are we going to go? Today, we hold fast to your word and we hold fast to your promises and we say, God, we lay claim on you. We believe in you. We are not going to let the ways of this world and the words of this world defeat us. We are going to hold on to your word today, Jesus. We believe in you. We believe in what you have to say and we're going to walk into the victory you have laid out for us. We believe you, Jesus. You have the final say. You will make a way where there is no way because you have the final say. And we believe that today. That is our proclamation. That is where our faith lies today. And I pray that those who are out there struggling in their faith today, today that they will turn that around for your glory, Jesus, and they will lay claim on your promises and say, God, I believe you. I believe you. I don't believe what I've said to myself. I don't believe what others have said to me and what the devil wants to whisper in my ear. Today, I change my belief. I look to you and I believe in you. You have the final say. We thank you for it, Jesus. And we're going to give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. And you will stand victorious as people stand around and say, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It looked wrong. It looked like it wasn't going to work. But God came in and changed their belief because he said it. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Victory is ours. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. We love you so much. We just appreciate the body of Christ. And uh, we're just grateful. Grateful to know a loving Savior and Mr. Smooth back there. A faithful God. He loves you. He has the final say. Walk in victory this week. We love you. God bless you all.
<laughs> is that the dog? Y'all yeah. want to see the dog? Here's Yogi. Hi, Yogi. This little creature. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. Love y'all.